All right, so I um, started something new in this series that I'm working on, and it actually took a long time to figure out the process. So I want to speak about two things, content and process. Process-wise, I started with uh, having come off a trip to Japan and a fascination with the traditional culture of kimono. And I had a piece of silk, which is where I started here, and painted this silk as if an obi, the belt that goes around the kimono. And I took the traditional rules of the um, kimono, where you are taking small pattern, mixing with large pattern, colors that are then in between. However, coming from a modern day Japan, and it can be extrapolated anywhere, uh, there are those who do not want to follow the rules. And it's, if this becomes a tradition as a prison or tradition imprisoned, and it can go either way. Once you fit yourself into tradition, it's very hard to get out of it. And unfortunately, once you want to break out of the traditional of anything, you are, have to be pretty courageous to fight those norms and probably be ostracized for a while. And that's where she comes in. If you were to come close, you would see this little crow because the crow is fascinating around the world. Always the same message. The crow is the lawgiver, the messenger to the heavens, no matter the culture. And I just was so fascinated that you could be anywhere in the world and the traditional culture has this guy show up and bring messages up and down from above. So here she is ostracized and in prison because of thwarting her traditional, um, uh, thwarting her participation in this tradition. As you see, she's in white. She's actually a nun, but for my purposes, she plays this other role. And once she, you have people leaving tradition, tradition starts to become imprisoned itself. And I guess it becomes a living process that way. So, starting with this OB, and then bringing out the details from the OB, this guy here comes there, etc., etc. And then I wanted to play with layers. So, this was the most fun part for me. I love it when things are on top of and in front of things, and I wanted to see how many uh, layers of this clear coat I could put on without clouding. And after a, a, a sufficient amount of curing time so that you could, if you owned this, you can't come here and do this, but if you owned this, you could look for where this all started. And you cannot find the edges. So if I make myself clearer, you put on enough coats so that that first piece is just another line. It's not actually a physical piece anymore in and of itself. So we've got content, tradition as a prison, and vice versa, being imprisoned by tradition and process was a big experiment. It took three years of coats. So because you want to cure it to make sure you're not clouding and finding the right clear coat that didn't have yellow added, didn't have orange added, like a shellac or a varnish. And I guess that's what told me when to stop, <laughs> when I was able to blur the edges and um, not lose my clear lines. Okay. We'll always take questions always if somebody shows. What's the OB part of that? The OB was this piece of silk, and it is that belt that ties okay. around the whole kimono clothes. So this is all about the uh, uh, tradition of kimono from pattern and color. I had a great time in Kyoto because it is the weaving capital, silk weaving capital of the world. In fact, the emperor at one point hundreds of years ago, moved another palace into Kyoto so he could go down to the weavers' markets and collect as much fabulous silk as possible. 
And I did meet a 78-year-old woman doing her weavings and said, okay, I'll leave my world behind and come and apprentice with you because it is an extraordinary process with this fine, fine fabric, really extraordinary. When did you do that? 2015. Yeah, I got the Freeman Foundation to pay for me to go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hey, <laughs> I, did, I did my part. I came back and talked about it. And still, right? Okay. Anyway. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you.